Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. The first one, as you can see, is about Brandon Curry and him changing a coach. After freaking 8 years. 8 years. And this comes as a big surprise because these guys worked for 8 freaking years. This has gotta be the longest coach-client relationship out of all bodybuilders today, active bodybuilders. Yeah, I know, Ronnie Coleman worked with Chad Nichols probably for his entire career, and there are examples, sure, field hit with Hunter Ambert and so on, but right now, as far as the active bodybuilders, I think it has to be the longest one, correct me if I'm wrong, but lately it seems like bodybuilders switch coaches every couple of years, and some of them, for example, Justin Rodriguez, switch coaches show after show. I think he changed like three or four coaches this year only. Anyways, Brandon Curry stopped working with Abdullah, and Abdullah made this post right here, as you can see. He wrote a lengthy caption about their relationship and how they worked, when they started, and so on. And apparently they started in 2016, as you can see. And today, for some reason, they stopped their partnership. And we are a little bit less than 16 weeks out of Mr. Olympia. What does this mean? Is Brandon Curry gonna prep alone now? But a bigger question is probably why did he stop working with Abdullah now? I mean, Abdullah got Brandon from being like an average pro to winning the Mr. Olympia and winning multiple Arnold Classics and placing second at the Mr. Olympia. They did phenomenal job together. And it seemed like Brandon was always pretty much at his best. Uh, lately, he hasn't been placing as high as he would like to, probably. But I don't think it has anything to do with coaching. I think it's simply the age and also the other guys are so much better. Yeah, last year he got sick a day before the show. He was hospitalized, so he couldn't uh, look his best. But generally, Brandon was doing really well with Abdullah. So why would he stop working with him now? I mean, there are a couple of possible reasons. For example, there could be who knows what going on behind the scenes. Maybe the relationship isn't as good as it was. Maybe they have some personal issues. I don't know. There could be a lot of things behind the scenes. The other thing is Brandon might be retiring. Which is something I see a lot in the comments. A lot of people are speculating that Brandon might be retiring and that's the reason why he stopped working with Abdullah. Maybe he is not even gonna try and find a new coach. Or maybe, maybe, I think this probably is the reason. If you guys watch the episode of the Menace podcast with Dennis James where Abdullah was a guest, he actually said that he's moving away from the oxygen gym. He's no longer gonna work with Badr Budai and all those guys in Kuwait. And you guys know that Brandon is in Kuwait even right now. And he is apparently prepping for the Mr. Olympia. He has always prepped for the Mr. Olympia in Kuwait. And you guys know how it works. When you're there, they provide the best conditions possible for you. They give you the best gear possible. They give you the food. You're in this amazing hotel with spa and so on. And you have the best gym in the world, basically. And I guess they're probably giving him some money to be there to promote their gym. And maybe Badr Budai or somebody else wasn't okay with him working with Abdullah, who just left Kuwait, left the oxygen gym. So I'm guessing that's probably the reason they probably applied pressure on Brandon to stop working with Abdullah. That's just my best guess, it's all speculation. I have no real information as of right now. If I find out anything, I'm gonna make a video about it, so guys, stay tuned. But as of right now, who Brandon Curry might actually work with? Who could be his next coach? That's a really good question. Is there anybody who could work with Brandon and potentially help him, you know, reach that top again? Get in that top three mix once again? Is there anybody better than Abdullah for Brandon Curry? Yeah, I think there is. And I'm sure you guys are thinking the same thing. Stefan Kinsel, that's right. I don't know if he can actually devote himself to all of the bodybuilders at this point. He has so many top guys right now. But if Brandon started working with him... I think Brandon would actually, could potentially be one of the top three guys. If he is truly at his best, if he brings up his legs especially, if he brings up the overall fullness and also comes in conditioned, which is something I'm sure Stefan can bring out of Brandon, I mean he already has enough muscle. Before he started with Abdullah, he was a lot smaller in 2016. And Abdullah helped him build the muscle. Now he has the muscle. What he needs is a really good peak. 
you know, better fullness and more conditioning. And Abdullah, sure, he did great with Brandon, but who else did he prep successfully? Who else did he have under his roster who he really helped pick super well? There aren't that many guys. You can't compare him to somebody like Stefan Kinzel. Stefan is probably the best coach in the world right now. So if Brandon starts working with him, I don't know, man. I think he can be a top three guy again. I don't know if he can win the Mr. Olympia, but top three, I think it's very possible. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. All right, since I mentioned Stefan Kinzel, here is a client of his. What are the chances? <laughs> I mean, Stefan is coaching like half of the pros today. Anyways, we got a physique update from William Bonac 10 days out of Portugal Pro, aka Mr. Big Evolution. And uh, here is a guy who was battling against Brandon Curry when Brandon was at his best. These two guys had their own rivalry going on uh, back in their era, we can say that way, back in 2018, 2019, 2020, and they would always be top two, whichever show they did, and Brandon would always prevail, but after a couple of years, they are no longer what they used to be. Brandon is still at the top, like he was fourth at the Mr. Olympia last year, uh, however, Bonek fell down a little bit, but it seems like he has risen. Stefan Kinzel brought him back from the dead. So, you guys know that the top 10 this year at the Mr. Olympia is going to be very tough to achieve for any bodybuilder, really. So, in that top 10, we're going to have for sure Derek Lansford, Hari Chopin, Nick Walker, Samson Dauda, Andrew Jack, Hunter Labrada, Krijo is out, and then who is next? I think I might make a special video about this to truly analyze this, this thing top 10, but uh, William Bonek will probably be in there. I was doubting him, as you guys know, but he proved me wrong. He really came back. And I didn't expect him to look this good. And I don't think he would have done what he did if there wasn't for Stefan Kinzel. And I think a lot of bodybuilders are recognizing that. And that's why they started working with him. Martin Fitzwater almost won the New York Pro against Nick Walker. And he's definitely the guy who's gonna be in top 10. In my opinion, he's right after the bunch I just named. Maybe even higher. He might even beat some of the guys who were in that top 7 last year. Krijo is out, but Nick is in. So top 8, 8th place actually is available. I think it's gonna be Martin Fitzwater. Last year, 8 was Tony Burton. Martin beat him very convincingly at the New York Pro. So I think Martin is 8th right now. And William Bonac is probably right there. Yeah, probably 9th. But we'll see. It's gonna be interesting. Maybe some of the guys who are usually in that top uh, 7, top 8, like Andrew Jack, don't even qualify, don't even compete, maybe they come in off, but anyways, 10 days out of uh, Portugal Pro, this is what William Bonac looks like, and I think he looks even better than before the Emperor Cup Spain. I think his physique looks even more alive right now that he had a little rebound or something, so I think he's gonna have even better look at the Portugal Pro who will he face? Krizo was supposed to do it, but he's out. It'll probably be Nathan Diasha. But Nathan just lost to Bechrus and William Bonac uh, beat Bechrus. So can Nathan beat Bonac? I think it's very possible. I think it's going to be a very close battle. But I don't know if the judges are going to give it to Nathan unless Bonac is off and Nathan is really on, like he was uh, at a past show in Italy. So yeah, I think Bonac right now is the favorite to win Portugal Pro. I think he's going to win two shows this year, two European shows, and go to the Mr. Olympian. In my eyes, He's probably top 10. Uh, top 10 for sure. Either 9th or 10th or maybe even higher. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. Alright, next up we got a little off-season physique update from Marcelo D'Angelis, aka Horse MD, and this is him right now doing a proper bulk. He's 130 kilos right now, which is around 286-87 pounds. Let's round it up to 290. So this is him at... Uh, almost close, I'd say close to 300 pounds, I mean, this guy, he's not short, but he's not exactly tall, and he's already close to 300 pounds, you can see that he got a little bit chubby this offseason, but I think this is great, I think this is how you actually grow the fastest, he is not fat or anything like that. I mean, these guys with so much muscle, they can't even get fat, really. Even when they try, it's pretty much impossible. As long as they're training hard and, you know, taking the supplements and stuff like that, they're gonna get a little bit watery, a little bit fluffy, chubby, whatever, but not fat. Definitely not fat. So this is a great offseason for him. I think he's gonna make some solid progress. Uh, when is his next show? I have no idea. 
but I do think he actually needs a serious off-season because he turned pro recently. He is not exactly on the level of development like some of the other top guys. And we could have seen that at the Arnold Classic this year. And he was completely off with conditioning. He should not have even competed looking like that. But before that, at the Romania Pro, he actually looked really good. Actually looked phenomenal. So if he comes in condition, the next show he does, and actually does this off-season and puts on more muscle, more density, more, more maturity and stuff like that, and it looks like he's working on it. He tagged Milos Archev in this post, so he's still coached by Milos, so he's probably forcing some growth right now working with Milos, with uh, his protocols and so on, and it's working, you know, he's getting bigger, definitely. It doesn't look like he's taking it easy, it looks like he's bulking, you know, trying to get as big as possible, so I think next time you see this guy on stage, he's gonna look impressive, and, you know, he might even win some pro shows. What do you guys think? Tell me down below, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, for more content like this, guys, stay tuned, subscribe to this channel, thank you so much guys for watching, see you soon, all the best, and bye-bye.